So I'm gonna just drain these guys. I wonder what you could do with this strawberry liquid. I wonder if this would be good. You think this is tasty? I'm gonna tell you later. Hey, that's good. Is it? Yeah, it is. it's really good. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark, and I'm a reporter for NYT Cooking, and I'm going to make a strawberry scone loaf. Not strawberry scones, not an Irish soda bread, but something that sort of combines the two into this fabulous, moist, and crunchy on the outside hybrid. They're so easy that if you have kids who like to bake, just leave the recipe out on the counter and just mention that Mother's Day is coming up. They'll get the idea. So why make a loaf rather than just regular scones? You know when you get a really good scone and the top is like craggy and crunchy and then the inside is fluffy? That is like the perfect scone. Having it in one round piece keeps the moisture in the inside, but then you still get those little craggly bits on the outside if you score it before baking. For this scone recipe, I like to use dried strawberries rather than fresh. When you have dried fruit in a scone or in any other baked good and you bite into it, it's almost like finding this little pocket of jam because dried fruits are so condensed in flavor and they're so sweet. However, if you wanna do the fresh strawberries, go ahead and do it. Blot them dry just really, really well before you add them to the scone batter. The thing about scones is you have to have a light touch. If you mix it too much, they're gonna get heavy, and the, if you work the butter in too much, they're gonna get a little bit greasy. So really what you want is to just mix it as little as possible. So start out with your flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and I forgot what this is, baking soda? Okay, baking soda. Sometimes you add baking soda and baking powder for a scone, sometimes you just use one. Just mix that together. And I'm gonna grate the butter in. And this is chilled butter, it's not frozen. If you have a food processor, you can do this in the food processor. It takes about one and a half minutes. I make scones a lot, actually, because they're so easy. And my family loves them. And they're really good warm. So you wanna make them and then just serve them and eat them immediately. Yeah, so if you are gonna have your kids make these for you, it also might be easier for them to use the grater rather than pull out the food processor and then have to clean the food processor. Depends on your kids, depends on your kitchen important thing here. So inevitably, whenever you grate something, there's always stuff stuck to the back of the grater and you need to get it because this is your butter and you need as much butter as possible in your scones. You're just tossing the flour and you're getting the flour coating all of the little shredded bits. And what I'm looking for is, I want this to look like a big bowl of oatmeal. If you're using a food processor, you wanna stop before it gets to be oatmeal. You wanna stop when the mixture looks like there's chunks of lima beans in there. You know, it, I say oatmeal, you know what it really looks like? It looks like flour covered corn flakes. See how that kinda looks like flour covered corn flakes? Now we're gonna add the liquid ingredients. The thing about my fridge is that I always have yogurt and I rarely have buttermilk. So half the time when I make this, I use yogurt. If you have regular yogurt, you don't need to thin it out, it's pretty runny. But if you have Greek yogurt, you wanna just thin it out with a little bit of milk. I love a mini whisk. It just makes such quick work of things. Put this in and just stir it together. This comes together so quickly. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a second and I'm gonna get my strawberries in here too. So I'm gonna just drain these guys. And this is important, you wanna pat them dry because you want the moisture to be on the inside. So pat them dry really well. And I'm gonna chop them up into fairly large pieces. I like it to be like, oh my God, I just found this like chunky, delicious strawberry in there. There we go. So what happens is the strawberries are getting coated with the flour mixture. The liquids are hydrating the flour as well. And I am gonna just press it together into a ball. So you don't wanna overwork it. You do need to smush it though. If you're not using a food processor, don't be afraid to kind of smush it together. Another thing is the hydration of flowers depends on how dry it is when you're cooking. If you find that it's not coming together, don't be afraid to just put a little more buttermilk in there. I'm just gonna get the last bits in this cup. And so when it comes together, smush it. And I'm gonna put it out and I'm gonna finish forming it right onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet. This is actually a great thing for kids to do because it's so tactile, it's so, it feels really good. You are looking for an eight inch round. Should be about an inch and a half thick. Don't worry if it looks craggy on the surface, that's actually fine because those bake up into these crunchy little nuggets which are so delicious. 
So with the scoring, so what I want to do is I want to cut into the scones, but not all the way down. I'm going to keep them connected at the bottom, and that is what is going to keep them nice and moist. If this is, say, like an inch and a quarter thick, I'm going to cut about halfway. And the reason that I'm going to cut them at all is as they bake, this is going to open up, and so you're going to get even more crunchiness, plus the buttermilk and the sugar is going to seep down in there, so you get extra buttermilk and extra sugar. All the buttermilk is doing right now is it's going to help this get really nice and brown. You could use regular milk. You could use an egg wash if you wanted to, just an egg beaten with some water. You want to paint down on the sides because you want those sides to be nice and brown too. And you really want to make sure you get into the crevice, into those scored areas that you just cut so that when they rise, they're going to get the buttermilk and then they're going to get brown too. I'm just using buttermilk because, hey, I have it. It's there then you don't have to go and find something else. I'm also gonna be very generous with my sugar because it's really good. So sprinkle it with an open hand, as they say. Also, when you arrange your oven racks, it, this bakes better in the top of the oven. You know how heat rises? So it's 375, but it's at the hottest part of your oven. And I know these are like little details that don't sound like they make a big difference, and they don't make a big difference, but they make a small difference, and you might as well like do everything you can to get the most out of your scones, right? Okay, see how brown it is? See how it's split apart a little bit? See the little pools of sugar that have just melted into the buttermilk on top? That is what we're looking for. You can let it cool on the rack and just make sure that there's air circulating you know, underneath it. Like with the stove, we've got, it's off, so there's air under there and I'm just gonna let it hang out. And I'm gonna watch it until it's cool enough because that'll make it faster, right? <laughs> My mouth is literally watering. <laughs> And I've moved it to a cutting board just in case I feel like cutting it, although <laughs> I'll probably just rip it apart. But I just want to point out that this looks like a flower. And so just imagine on Mother's Day getting a bouquet of scones. Is that enough butter? It'll do. Mm. You got that just rich pool of strawberryness right in the center. It's like the jam, so you don't need extra jam. I think this is perfect.